I should invest in a humidity meter. Like some way to test wood because fucking this is bullshit. Complete bullshit. So that's going to complicate my plans a bit, but it's not going to ruin the wood. That was my fault. I stacked it in a uniform stack where they were close together. And I did that right after I stacked my, my, bed, my longer pieces of wood in a lattice stack so they can dry out. So I'm going to open that up and see if that way of stacking actually allowed it not to mold up. As for that wood, I'm going to spray it down and then I'm going to dunk it in this Metricide 28. My, uh, my parents are in the funeral industry and this stuff is used for cleaning uh, corpses and medical, well I guess it's not medical if they're dead, but all the tools and stuff like that. And it's also used for some medical things too. But at least they carry it for like like washing down like corpses so they don't get fungus going on them and stuff like that. And um, at least that's what I've heard. I, I bet they probably wouldn't advertise saying that you should wash them with that. But I mean if you don't want grandma to mold up, it's the best way to do it. So this one and the, all the other ones in the crate are um, expired from 2014. So they're about five years out of date. I'm not sure if it'll work, but we can give it a shot. It's worth free. And now, as for this, there's a bit, but that's a normal amount. Oh, there's some. Yep, we got some. Now I'm going to be honest. I was using moldy lumber before. And if it's just a little bit, I just wipe it off. Because it's not the fact that it has the mold. It's the fact that it has so much that's the problem. Because everything is going to have mold on it. Yeah, so it looks like where these intersected didn't have enough time to dry out. There's some blotches, especially on that right there. So it looks like my lattice stack wasn't as good of an idea after all. But it definitely could work better. I'm going to do this near the door. So in case this thing releases some foul odor or some noxious fumes, for whatever reason, it's like half a decade expired, then I can just step backwards into the yard. There's a very chemically smell to it. Yeah, that doesn't quite turn much of a color at all. So there probably isn't much of an active ingredient there. Well, I, um, I looked it up and I can't seem to find much information about there being a native reaction with hydrogen peroxide and um, oh, what's it called? Gouteraldehyde. So I figure I might as well add some hydrogen peroxide and then I can run away. It was bad. This doesn't got a smell to it, but it's not that much of a smell. It smells like a very diluted, um, yeah, it smells like a very diluted degreaser. This is a lot of work. 
You know, maybe spraying it beforehand would be better. So since like one of these boards was enough to darken that entire bucket to almost pitch black. I think there's a lot of junk on these boards that need to be washed off. fully submerge it in the chemical. That is nice. So now I'll take the lumber, I'll soak it in the chemical, put it in the wheelbarrow, then go and uh, rinse it off with a, a water jet, and then bring it back for it to dry. I have a lot less wood to deal with since a lot of it's in the walling I can use a more efficient well a more efficient way to dry but it's less efficient for um, space so I got one of these racks that I had outside and I kind of amazed by how level the floor is because I didn't have to level it and these things will stand upright which is pretty good I'm really happy I leveled the floor a little bit and with these ones, I did not scrub these, but looking at them, I really don't see anything that scrubbing would help. There's a few specks. I figure I have a bunch of these stacked up and I have like a little bit of a air gap between them. And then I'll have a fan blowing some air around them tonight. And because I have the um, dehumidifier, it helps a lot. I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> oh well, I guess that just means that I should probably get back to work and stop talking. I'm once again changing my procedure. I'm going back to brushing by hand. But this time I'm going to use a barbecue grill gr brush. It'll work really good. It's a nice like heavy duty Brillo pad or whatever with a nice handle to it. So that should be perfect. It'll allow me to use less water. And I noticed a few, um, a few boards came through with a lot of spots, splotches on them. So it looks like a, a hand, a mechanical method to get them off is the best way. As I'm going through these, I'm finding that it seems like one board is starting a big issue on multiple different layers. So I have like this board will be moist 
and then that will make pockets of stuff growing on between this and the 12 other boards on that but these boards would be fine so it really does seem like one or two boards are causing a lot of problems like this one for instance look at this one was very wet and on both sides it infected six boards as for my solution over the past few days it has moved towards more of attacking the moisture issue than the fungus issue or the mold issue and so uh, after that point I've stopped dunking them in that cleaning solution because I'm not quite sure how much of an improvement that will be because if these boards get wet again or if they stay wet some other spore is going to fall on them and start it all over again so I need to just focus on the moisture issue instead of the stuff growing on them issue but I'm still washing them off just to help clean them up and plus I'm noticing that by washing them off they really are cleaning up quite a bit. This side was the black side, but now it's actually quite light. When I finish the workshop, I might actually go back through and wipe, wipe down all the walls because I didn't realize how dirty they are. Well, look who just came in the mail. It's a wood moisture tester. Maybe I should keep those. Eleven percent. It was mid fourteen point five percent moisture. Now that is pretty handy. Actually, you know what? Let's try out some of this unwashed stuff that's been sitting outside for a few days. Way over, way too much. 14% moisture. Good. 11.5. 9.2%. I'll go find the little manual to see if I have to push them in all the way or not. So I've been measuring all sorts of wood just to get a, not a feel for it and also to, to tell how does your actual feel of like how moist something is compare to the meter i find that this stack is at around 11 percent moisture which seems very low and then the wood in my basement the wooden beams in my house are at around 14 percent 
and they do not have any mold on them. The uh, some other wood, like wooden trim in my house, is around 12 to 10 percent. But something interesting, I noticed that like the beams on the outside of my workshop are like 9 percent moisture, and a two by four that I had sitting out for several years is actually at like 6 percent moisture, six or seven. So it, it appears that wood does dry out outside much faster. I was hoping that it would dry out quicker in here, but this stuff that I have here is still in the 17 or 18 range. But yet the lumber that was rained on and then I washed and then set up for like two hours is drier than this lumber. So perhaps just leaning the wood up against the building on the sunny side on a sunny day is really good for driving off the moisture. I was worried that it wouldn't quite do it on the inside. It might cool, it might drive off the moisture on the outside, but I don't know. However, there still are a few boards that the moisture got stuck between them and so they, they kept the moisture and they really soaked it up and those boards are still moist, but you can feel those. So I am relatively confident that I can just go and, f and, and feel how it is and I can, I can find the boards that have actually dried out. They, they tend to be the lighter boards, the ones that are not quite as heavy duty. The, um, I guess the, the, the newer growth wood, I don't know. And then I can, yeah, I, I, I can focus more. I, I can trust how it feels to a certain extent, but there still seems to be like, whenever it feels dry, there still could be a bit extra moisture, like up to 18 or 19% moisture that that could actually cause some problems. So I don't know what I'm going to do, but it's really nice to at least have something to like look at and point to and I'm going to aim for 15% or 14% moisture before I start using them in the building. I think it's probably a good idea. And that's why I I have to switch to using these longer boards and I'm not so sure if I want to wash those in the same way because then I have to wait a long time for all the boards to dry before I can finish the wall. And this is taking me like a month to do. I don't know. But that's pretty cool. Not bad for like 20, 25 bucks or whatever. I'll do a video on this by itself whenever I'm further along. It's kind of interesting. They actually have a uh, two holes in the cap. There's a microchip inside. Little circuit board. And you actually pop the needles through there. It's kind of cool. Seven percent moisture. Eleven percent. Now that might just be a difference between white pine and yellow pine. Because what I measured out there that was extremely low were white pine 2x4s. This is all, I believe, yellow pine and same, same as this. And so these are the exact same moisture. So I, I think the fact that those long boards have been here for months, even if they might have mold, the mold will be dormant because it's probably all um, had the moisture stripped out of it so far. And having this dehumidifier really helps. I cranked it down to uh, Trying to keep it at 55% humidity or lower, and it's actually keeping it around 60 or 65% humidity, which is perfectly fine. Whereas before, when I initially stacked these in here, we had very high humidity, where we actually had like ice towers growing out of the floor, and so that definitely contributed to this. But there's also the possibility that it just was from issues with the roof, because even if they were stacked like this, there isn't much airflow, and so if a few drops of water went in there, that would disperse itself through a lot of the boards and cause mold. And so thankfully now I have a lot of the roof problems fixed. There are a few spots where a few drops come down, but most of the water 
actually sticks to the underside, underside of the roof because there's it's so little amount of water. It's a it's a good pro it's a good step forward on this problem. I think I'm gonna end it here because I just I don't feel like filming the rest of this. This is kind of, this is one of those things that just kind of makes me pissed off and it's just like annoyed. I, I just want to get it done. I don't want to have to film it. And when I'm filming it, it takes like twice as long to do anything. And I don't feel like editing this anymore because I kind of just want to forget about this whole thing. But remember the lesson I learned. I just want to, I just want to like, overall, I'm still trying to get this damn south wall built. And it's just like 10 things have come up during the, t the month I've been working on this. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.